So I have great news. There are medical schools that do not require the MCAT, and it is possible to become a doctor in the U.S. and Canada without taking this dreaded exam. Before we continue into the details of whether you should avoid the MCAT, whether uh, you should not avoid the MCAT, and we'll go through a list of schools that don't require the MCAT, I do want to introduce myself. My name is Zhenya Kremchenkova. I'm the content manager here at BMO, and we have helped hundreds and thousands of students prepare for the MCAT and do well on the MCAT, but we're also not proponents of the MCAT. We do not think that it is a great indicator of your ability to become a doctor or your suitability for this profession. Um, however, you know, the reality is that the MCAT is being used and we are helping students ace this exam, but we also know that uh, standardized testing is not a strength for most students, and we understand why students look for medical schools that do not uh, require an MCAT score. We have some good news, especially for Canadians and anyone who is looking to attend medical school in Canada. But we will also help you find schools and programs that will allow you to avoid the MCAT in the United States. First of all, a very common question that we get asked by students is whether it's really possible to get into medical school without the MCAT. And the answer is yes. It is possible. It is a little bit more challenging because the MCAT is still a really major part of the medical school admissions process in Canada and in the United States. So your pool of schools that where you would go or where you would apply is significantly smaller if you choose not to write the MCAT. If you want to make the pool of schools where you would be eligible larger, then unfortunately, you will most likely need to write the MCAT. But let's get back to the original question. Yes, it is possible to uh, become a doctor here in the United States and Canada without writing the MCAT. So what kind of programs do not require the MCAT usually? Most of the programs that do not require the MCAT are early assurance or BSMD programs or some sort of accelerated routes. Um, in uh, the United States, a very famous one, an early assurance program is FlexMed by Econ School um, of Medicine. And in Canada, another example is QUARMS, which is a Queen's University Faculty of Medicine kind of accelerated program to medical school. Those types of programs believe that they can prepare you for medical school better, or they can accelerate your route to becoming a doctor by asking you to complete certain uh, science and non-science requirements, and therefore the MCAT is usually not required by programs like that. Uh, is that you know, a good thing? Should you avoid writing the MCAT? A lot of people really staunchly advocate for the use of MCAT. BMO is not one of those uh, companies where we do not think the MCAT is a good indicator of your academic abilities or your suitability for medicine, as I said, but why is it so popular? Why do people keep kind of pushing it uh, as a really great indicator, especially of your knowledge uh, of certain sciences and non-sciences? Well, some might argue that the MCAT and preparing for the MCAT does give you some solid foundation in the knowledge of topics and of disciplines that you will need to know if you want to become a physician. Certainly, you know, knowing biology, chemistry, physics, uh, psychology and sociology, uh, so the social sciences is an important aspect of, uh, you know, learning to become a physician. Those intro course, courses you take in your undergrad, or even if you know you major in biology or in, in the natural sciences, that's great. And we, of course, support any sort of academic preparations that you undergo uh, when you uh, are on your way to becoming a physician. However, our issue and our current argument to those who support the MCAT or the use of MCAT is that I don't, uh, we don't think that you know. Uh, testing your knowledge in those subjects using a standardized test is necessarily the best 
approach. It's, it's actually usually not the content that students find most challenging for the MCAT, right? Most students actually find uh, the format of the test the most challenging part. It's passage-based, it is a very long, very lengthy exam, and you are really tested on your ability to apply the knowledge that you gained in those intro courses or in your undergrad to passage-based questions. Well, uh, we understand that, you know, it's great to have that knowledge, but most students actually prepare for the format more than they prepare for the content. As you might have noticed, it's really hard to prepare for the MCAT the same way you would prepare for like a college exam or any other exam that you've ever taken. So our issue with the MCAT is also its format and uh, the fact that somebody is a really good a uh, test taker, a really great MCAT test taker, does not make them a good physician or does not show that they know more about biology, chemistry, physics, math, et cetera, than somebody who does not do well on the MCAT because of the format. It's really the knowledge that we care about and as, as should you, I would rather have a physician who knows um, these subjects, topics in these subjects, um, rather than, you know, a, a person who can apply those topics to the MCAT exam. So um, it's really, yes, to some extent, good foundation. If you took those prerequisites, if you took the sciences, we strongly encourage you to do that. But we don't think that the MCAT should be the only way that knowledge is tested. The MCAT is not going to be your last lengthy and difficult exam if you're wanting to become a doctor, right? So if you're avoiding it, just saying, you know, I just need to get into medical school and then I'll just, I'll be fine. I, I, I don't have to think about the MCAT ever again. Yes, you won't need to think about the MCAT, but you'll have OSCE exams, you'll have USMLE, you'll have MCCQE lots of exams that are even more difficult. Uh, many of them have several parts, as you know. Uh, some of those parts have been, you know, canceled, but still many of these exams will have several steps or several parts, um, and they will be even more extensive and more challenging. So if you're trying to avoid the MCAT because you just don't like exams and think it's uh, you know too lengthy and you need to know too much for, uh, for you to do well, Pause and reflective medicine is really your uh, path because, as I said, the MCAT is not going to be your uh, final lengthy test in medical school and beyond. But I think ultimately there is one more aspect of the MCAT that really pushes people away is the staggering costs of preparing and taking the MCAT. So it's totally understandable. Um, Taking the MCAT alone costs, you know, over $300. That's just to take the test. Um, so not to prepare for it. Uh, MCAT prep, as you know, is its own branch like of industry. Uh, thousands and millions of dollars are spent on uh, prep courses, prep books, you know, tutoring, all of that. Uh, as I already mentioned, we offer all those services because there's really a need. But does that mean that we support the use of MCAT? No, not necessarily. We, as I said, we do not support the use of the MCAT, but we see the students need. So we try to help them with MCAT prep as much as possible. Um, but if you want to avoid the MCAT because of costs, also take a pause because the MCAT is probably one of the cheapest items on your list of medical school admissions. Applications are more expensive. Then you'll have all the CASPER fees or, you know, anything like situational judgment um, test fees. Of course, then you're going to be going to medical school, which is so expensive. So uh, try to think of the MCAT as part of the process. Um, and there are some uh, there's some help that AMC offers for <clears throat> wavering fees if you need it. So do look into that. And uh, as much as we totally understand why you would want to avoid the MCAT because of the cost, uh, it's not going to be the biggest cost actually uh, while you're pursuing medicine. So uh, you need to budget and see what kind of fees can be wavered for you. So that's uh, just some things you need to remember when you're 
trying to avoid the MCAT. We totally understand why you would want to, but uh, some of these reasons might not be uh, you know, strong enough or uh, legitimate enough for you to avoid it. Uh, again, I totally understand why you hate it and you don't want to write the MCAT, but just reflect on some of these items that I discussed already. They might help you uh, accept uh, sort of the reality that the MCAT is there. And by writing the MCAT, you will expand on the programs that you would like to apply to and perhaps attend. Again, we hope that the list of schools that do not require the MCAT grows every year. But for now, it seems like it's a really big part of the admissions process still. Um, and you know, by, by writing the MCAT, you, you might increase your chances uh, of, of acceptance. And now we're here to give you a list of medical schools that do not require the MCAT. I do have a caveat about this, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Most medical schools, uh, both MD and DO in the United States, do require um, your MCAT score. So uh, if you want to avoid the MCAT, it's best if you start preparing for your journey as a medical student very early on, because really the only programs in the United States that do not require the MCAT are BSMD programs. So sort of uh, programs where you will really need to be certain of becoming a doctor, you know, out of high school. Uh, so that's not for everyone, but uh, just so you're aware of these, there are BAMD or BSMD programs in the United States, such as University of Albany, uh, Drexel University College of Medicine, uh, Marshall University, Joan C. Edwards School of Medicine, Northwestern um, University also has a BA, BSMD program that does not require the MCAT, then there's Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, the University of Toledo College of Medicine and Life Sciences, the Warren Alpert Medical School. Again, these are uh, BSMD, BAMD programs, not the actual medical schools, okay? University of Florida College of Medicine, University of Rochester School of Medicine and Dentistry. So programs at these universities and these medical schools, the BSMD, BAMD programs, often waiver the MCAT requirement if you start your journey from the BA program, from the undergrad program. They're certain that they can prepare you for, you know, the rigors of medical school uh, better than the MCAT, so they do not actually require it if you do start your BA or BS um, program at these schools. Then there's a list of, you know, um, early assurance medical school programs. So these are a little bit different. Uh, these, um, these are the kind of programs where you enter an undergrad in usually any field you want, but you um, apply to medical school in your second or third year and you get an early assurance that you will be accepted, that you're taking the right prerequisites, that you are uh, completing all the requirements of that medical school. As I mentioned earlier, a really famous one is the FlexMed program at Econ School of Medicine. So um, there's a few more that you can look into. Uh, there's the Albany Medical College, Early Assurance Program, Brody School of Medicine, Early Assurance Program, Dartmouth University, Geisel School of um, Medicine, Early Assurance Program, Georgetown University, Econ School of Medicine, as I already mentioned, Tufts University, University of Rochester, and University of Toledo. So all of these schools have early assurance programs. Do look them up, see if they waiver the MCAT requirement, uh, if you apply at a certain uh, point. Uh, so good luck with that. It's not a huge list, as I said, and most proper sort of four-year, three-year MD and DO schools, unfortunately, do require the MCAT. So if you're already graduating from your undergraduate degree, these might not be as helpful. But I do have a really, really great list of Canadian medical schools that do not require the MCAT. In fact, there are more Canadian proper MD programs. There are no DO programs in Canada.
there are allopathic uh, proper MD programs in Canada that do not require the MCAT. And these are the University of Ottawa, Northern Ontario School of Medicine. McGill University also usually does not require your MCAT score. There are some conditions. So please check out their official website, Laval University, University of Montreal, and uh, Sherbrooke University. All of these schools do not require the MCAT. So uh, it's quite good news for uh, many Canadian medical school applicants. So please look up these schools, see their requirements. And uh, these are all great schools. So if you can get into them without writing the MCAT, good for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, uh, please like, uh, share, comment. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comment section and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.